Hey, welcome to Book Mob uh, Ep 39, I think it is. And um, today I'm going to be talking about, okay, first of all, I want to talk about, um, I'm um, currently uh, going through a treatment uh, for various <laughs> mental issues um, for with uh, ketamine. Now, ketamine is a drug that's been used for decades for various um, treatments, uh, it's used as an anesthetic, um, I think it's used for pain in some regards, uh, but ketamine is a hallucinogenic type of drug, uh, I think, I don't know if it's, a, if, if it's um, called an hallucinogenic, but regardless, I, I was going, I'm going through this treatment and I've had a couple of trips. And it's been pretty uh, far out, pretty wacky, uh, wild and maddening and uh, frustrating and ugly and terrifying. <clears throat> so uh, in line with my um, personal um, experiences, I thought I just put into Google, I typed um, uh, ketamine and literature. Now, uh, there wasn't... Uh, I'm not saying that there aren't, but I didn't find... I found a lot of uh, non-fiction uh, literature on ketamine, which is obvious because it's a medical uh, drug. And um, <clears throat> also, I'm talking about the... I'm not talking about the illicit use of ketamine. I'm talking about the medically directed use of ketamine, you know, when you sort of uh, under the care of um, <clears throat> physicians who are dosing out um, ketamine in order for them to gauge the outcomes and the experience that you have. Anyway, so I, um, excuse me, <laughs> I looked, uh, I, I wanted to see if there was any uh, major uh, books. Anyway, one of the first books that um, uh, caught my eye was a book by a writer in uh, England. Um, I think she lives in Liverpool and she's a prolific writer she's written a huge amount of books and um this one is called ketamine addicted pandas dawn of the pandas so when i saw that i knew nothing about danny as a writer i've never heard of her um i'm sure she has a huge fan base uh because she seems to uh, uh write in a very specific uh, genre, uh, which I don't really, I, I wouldn't know what the genre is. However, um, I I like the title, Ketamine Addicted Pandas, Dawn of the Pandas, and um, <clears throat> unfortunately I couldn't get a copy of the uh, softback, so I um, downloaded an ebook on Kindle and um, prepared to read uh, Danny, um, uh, Danny's work uh, with an open mind. Now, whew. so let's talk. Ketamine, for me, my idea was put into the internet, ketamine literature, and one of the outstanding things that popped out was uh, Danny Brown's Ketamine Addicted Pandas, Dawn of the Panda. So I knew nothing about it, knew nothing about her as an author, as a writer, as a creator. And um, I didn't look it up. I didn't, uh, after I'd received the copy, I didn't, you know, I didn't go and find out who she was and what she's written. I just took it as uh, as it was downloaded and got, uh, and got stuck into it. Now, uh, it's a, it's like, Reading a very intense um, machine gun firing blitzkrieg of words which relies on uh, a heavy sort of uh, bracketing bombardment of of repetition of the uh, and and it's funny in the in the I think in the forward of the book, Danny says, please don't bloody write to me if you want to, 
you know, if they're like, what's, what's this about? And what is she saying? And, um, and also because of the heavy, well, I wouldn't even say, it's not really sexual. It's more, it's more just depravity um, online. And um, her book is, uh, in one sense, it's like, drinking really heavy uh, dosed alcohol and and getting off your brain. Because even though it, I mean, as a narrative, it doesn't, um, uh, it doesn't pull through as a narrative. It's very poetic and it's extremely, like the repetition is like, pop, 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 the same kind of ideas, you know, panda does this, panda does that. I mean, there's lots of use of words like cocks and and uh, cum and diarrhea and, uh, you know, I, I, 30 years ago, um, you know, if you wrote, even if you, I mean, it's funny, 30 years ago, you know, if, I'm sure there were books around that existed, but in the general population, in the general mass-produced media, you tended not to hear the words diarrhea, cum, cock, cock sucking, anal fucking, anal fisting. You didn't tend to hear those um, terms used, um, you know, on a common basis. Uh, obviously, time, is, <clears throat> society, culture has moved on, and now the internet offers us access to thousands and hundreds of thousands of uh, creators, artists, writers, filmmakers uh, who have their own um, agendas, their own missions, their own creative uh, impulses. And I, I would put Danny Brown uh, and Ketamine Addicted Pandas as Dawn of the Pandas as a kind of cultural phenomenon that exists because we have all taken a giant leap forward in what we can accept and what we can read, and how we read. Now, I think in my Goodreads review, I uh, stated that I couldn't recommend this book to anyone because I don't think anyone I know could actually read and finish it. And I mean that seriously. I don't think there's anyone I know who would actually, I mean, let alone this, the, you know, we live in a world where readership is 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 dropping, and people are, are just more uh, inspired and more turned to um, short form uh, imagery, uh, you know, TikTok, Instagram, uh, and and the like. So reading has become, even though there's five billion or six billion people on the planet, I guess reading is still dominant, but it is not as dominant. So reading time, reading discipline, is very very uh, limited. And when you go to the bookshops, I mean, I've got a few bookshops in Sydney and stuff, they're packed. People are buying books, you know, people are looking at books. You go down the different genres, it's packed. I mean, Kikiana in Sydney on the weekend is just packed full of people buying books. However, we don't know what happens once those books leave the store. How many books have you bought that you've left in on the table, you know, left uh, the bedside table, left on the on the kitchen table, have started and haven't finished. So uh, reading um, books is now, I think, uh, a chore for many, many people. Now, for readers, and I'm, when I mean readers, people who, who read for pleasure – and fun, and entertainment, and enjoy the reading experience, we are allowed a huge uh, smorgasbord of, um, of, of, of content, so that someone like me, I can read Ketamine Addicted Pandas, Dawn of the Pandas, because I enjoy reading, I love finding new authors, I certainly like finding experimental and tough reading. What is ketamine addicted pandas about? Mm, it's not much to do with ketamine, all right? Uh, my, I was drawn to the title, like I said at the beginning of the of the, of the program. I was told, you know, I wanted to find ketamine in literature. This is what I uh, this is what I fell upon at that point. So I still have, you know, this uh, probably loads of books out there, um, fiction books I'm talking about, literature uh, where ketamine plays a role. Um, I was looking for ketamine as character, ketamine as um, 
as a as a structure, a guide to the uh, to the uh, narrative, and see how it plays into the in, into the work. Now, in um, ketamine addictive pandas, ketamine is not explored in a in any kind of uh, uh, serious manner. It's merely, uh, I think, it's merely an, an illicit party drug that. Um, Apparently, um, and I don't know this, apparently that people take and buy and super, what is it called, super K, and, and I only learned those terms from reading Danny's work. Um, and I've read various articles about how uh, people have been taking uh, ketamine uh, in, in, in an illicit sense, not, uh, in my case, under a medical supervision for a prescribed reason. All I can say is that if if uh, there's one thing I know from my ketamine trips, and I've had about eight so far, um, there is no narrative in, in the trips. Uh, there's no, you don't go from A to B to C to D. No, I mean, and again, I've briefly spoken with some of the other people taking ketamine, and um, I don't know what their experiences are, but the same thing, the same idea resonates with me is that when you're on ketamine and we're talking about different doses as well, don't forget, you know, there's more, there's less, you know, whatever. Uh, in my experience, it's been hellish. It's been uh, uh, frightening. It's been uh, scary. Um, I, and I'm trapped in a, once you get into the ketamine trip, you're flowing along, you have a point where you're kind of anchored to reality and then it snaps away. And what happens, and again, okay, and this is my personal experience, and what happens once you separate, once that anchor breaks, you kind of uh, live in your own narrative in your head. But it's not a story narrative. It doesn't go, you know, uh, starts, beginning, middle, and end. It's a, an experience that is... Uh, tactile there's uh, there's tastes there's texture uh, there's imagery which is just off the fucking wall and if i took this uh, if i took ketamine without medical supervision i'd go fucking mental because maybe that's what holds me sane while i'm going through the ketamine is that when i'm lying in that bed and getting the feed there's a part of my brain that actually is maintaining uh, a cable into my reality saying, even though you don't know it right now, Gary, you are here and in place. So I was really hoping that um, the uh, Danny's work, um, you know, that the, ket that the ketamine addicted pandas would have a, a, a more uh, a cohesive uh, understanding of ketamine. However, even though it didn't, still, uh, the book itself is like a ketamine trip because it is just, it's, you know, you can read it, you can take in the, the language, uh, the, the lack of narrative. There, there, is a, there is a kind of a narrative because it moves from country to country to country, um, uh, but there isn't a sense, it's not a story, it's more of an... Um, a revealing uh, experience. Um, it's very nihilist in the sense that uh, everything is about degrading, you know, degrading people, degrading, you know, there's lots of things like anal fucking people to death. Uh, there's, um, you know, jizz and cum that uh, poisons you. So it's, I mean, there is an artistic sense to uh uh, Danny Brown's work, and I, I, I went through the book, and I found I, I, it was a challenging read for me to get through it. Um, but I kept going because I was I, I had a mission in my mind in response to my personal uh, ketamine journey. And when I came home from the last um, from my last trip, I said, "Okay, let me find if I can find ketamine in literature." And obviously, the, you know, the, the book I'm talking about right now, Ketamine Addicted Pandas, Dawn of the Pandas, uh, check out on Amazon, uh, check out Danny, um, 
Brown online. I'm sure you can find it. You know, don't put Dan Brown because that bloke just owns all the D, all the D Browns you can ever imagine, which is unfair. That's one thing I don't like about the internet. It just Dan Brown, Danny Brown. For some reason, the internet goes, oh, they're the same person. They're not. Give uh, Danny uh, a look. And would I recommend Carolina the Pandas, Dawn of the Pandas? You know, I'll only recommend it to people who are willing to read it, uh, you know, to read it fully, not to go through it and give up not to find the language uh, too sort of difficult to um, to manage. Uh, the language is beautiful in the sense that it's all in a jumble of um, of of this you know the, de- the degrading sense of humanity. So in a, and and as I said at the beginning of the at the beginning of this pod, um, Danny uh, Brown says, uh, you know, don't Please don't tell me what this book is about. It's about nothing, uh, and please don't send me any emails, or whatever, about about deviant sex or whatever, because you know she's just a creator, and that's just her mind going through, which I found quite funny. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a it is a difficult book to read. Uh, it is a challenge. Will you be entertained? I think you'll find yourself uh, entertained. <clears throat> uh, sporadically entertained um you'll be frustrated perhaps angry uh at trying to trying to elicit meaning from this book because there are times when you go you know fuck this i'm sick and tired of this repetitious fucking language and this madness this negativity this nihilist view of the world but at the end of the again once you once you peel back through all the layers it's just someone's very, very spot on, perfect view of whatever topic she was talking about. It's not about ketamine. That's that's for sure. I mean, I I wanted it to be a ketamine, but it's got nothing to do with ketamine. I mean, if if the one thing, let me look. What does ketamine do to me? And what is the book about ketamine? Ketamine destroys your present psyche. It strips you of your of who you are. As you went into the treatment, the book kind of uh, is about the confusion. It's uh, tough to read. It's a challenge to get through, much like um, having a ketamine infusion. So ketamine, the ketamine infusion itself is just fucking nightmarish. It's it's the as one of the doctors said to me when I had a really really bad trip on my second one. Uh, I don't remember this, but I was screaming and ah, fucking went out of my brain. Um, he said to me, Gary, he goes, ketamine isn't going, isn't, isn't impacting on you. It's the ketamine in you. And that's your narrative coming out for you. And in a sense, that really helped me because once I realized, oh, it's not impacting me. It's the ketamine's going on and allowing me to, to freak out or, to freak out, but at the same time, go somewhere where I've never, 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 never been. And that has been the journey since that second one, where each and every ketamine trip has uh, delivered to me a, a different response. A more po- still frightening, uh, still fucking uncomfortable, still dirty, still scary. With but the moments uh, of clarity, the moments of of wow are getting a bit uh, longer. Instead of like five seconds of wow, I might have now forty seconds of wow and uh, forty thirty nine minutes of of pure hellish nightmarish, you know, fucking madness. And when you read the book, it's like. Uh, what, 268, 300 pages of of scattered, maddening, frustrating fucking words that just drive you mad. It's just so, you go, what is going on? When is this going to fucking be? But it doesn't. And if there's one thing that's good about literature is when it can provide you with the angst, the feeling, the whatever it is, the anger, the joy, um, <clears throat> To get through it. 
So I'm thinking I will read some more uh, Danny Brown in 2024, and um, I'll see if my uh, if my view of her work um, becomes a little less intense. But at the end of the day, Ketamina Dicta Pandas, Dawn of the Pandas, is a worthwhile effort, not for everyone. Well, not for most people. Uh, there's definitely a cohort that will uh, that will be drawn to it. I would say that I'm not part of that cohort. I'm uh, I'm free basing in because I would never have heard of of Danny uh, Brown's uh, ketamine uh, addicted pandas until I myself put in uh, ketamine literature, and that's what came up. So that's a positive. That's a good thing, and. Um, I don't know if maybe I read a couple of other of uh, Danny's works. I, I might ask her if she wants to come on um, the smallest book show uh, on, on the planet and have a talk to her. But, you know, I'll just see how that goes. Anyway, um, I hope uh, you had a good reading week. Um, I hope you're finding books to read and getting out there. I've kind of, I haven't come to the end of my Stephen King book reading marathon because uh, I've read about 10 of his this year. Uh, I've still got a couple more to go. Uh, well, they're mainly um, uh, co-authored books with uh, um, Peter Straub. Um, also, I've I've just purchased the um, Stephen King, I think it's the Watchtower. Uh, it's, I think it's about seven or eight books in the Watchtower series, which I've never, never been interested to read. But now, because I'm on the Stephen King kick, I'll uh, have a look at that. And right now I'm reading um, Jack Carr, uh, Red Sky Morning. And the reason I love reading this book is because of the of the fucking reviews I see on Goodreads about people, comp- you know, <laughs> talking, you know, the, sort of that that sort of um, right wing, um, uh, the fear the fear of the right wing comes through for whatever reason. All the people who buy this book don't accept it. Oh, too many killing. He's talking about guns all the time. Yeah, um, Jack Carr is a um, former SEAL and uh, CIA operative, and he's become a. Uh, an author. This is his, I think, his seventh Jack, uh, his seventh Reese book. And uh, I look, I, I read them because um, I read the first one, and because he's a, I'm a former soldier myself, I just like the fact that a former soldier uh, can recreate his life and become a writer, um, and and you know, you know, sells millions of books around the world, and it's just good to see. Okay, so thanks for joining me. I hope you come this far. And remember, Ketamine Addicted Pandas, Dawn of the Pandas by Danny Brown. Uh, give it a go. If you've got a Kindle, it's good um, because it's, look, just read it and let me know. And look, please, in the comments, just let me know what you think. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll see you next time for our next episode of A Book Mob. Bye.